Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Colvin. This is Inside at Cape Cod. Thank you for joining me today. And I'm very pleased to have in studio the brand new president and CEO of the Cape Symphony, Roland Valliere. Roland, a good welcome, and thank you so much for joining me. It's I'm delighted to be here. So, Roland, uh, you're, you're new to Cape Cod, new to the symphony. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your professional background. Uh, how did you, you get into the, the career of, of music? Well, it's kind of full circle for me, having grown up in Rhode Island and going to college in the Boston area. And I was a musician. I studied percussion at the New England Conservatory and the Musicology at Brandeis and kind of fell into the field of orchestra management, which was a great fit for me. And off I went in my career, and it's been an incredible journey. I lived in the uh, uh, Midwest for a number of years. I was executive director of the orchestra in Kansas City and Omaha before that. We moved there from New York. And then um, had a bit of a jaunt in Silicon Valley. I worked as an entrepreneur, got involved in a startup at the Juilliard School uh, in New York, and went back to orchestra management. Uh, ran the orchestra in Columbus, Ohio, and then Memphis, Tennessee, and from Memphis I come to Cape Cod. Wow, so you really have uh, been all over the United States uh, doing all sorts of different things. So how do you go from, you know, from percussionist to executive director? How does that, how does that career path work? I'm sure that there are many facets well, of you know, it. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, the underlying thing really is an incredible passion for music and a facility for business. And, um, you know, a combination of those two things for me has just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. How you do it, you know, it's like one of those things in life that, there was a course I took that seemed interesting, and uh, it was really sort of the window into arts management. Uh, the fellow that gave that course, his name was Ralph Black. Uh, he was the uh, he worked for what was then the American Symphony Orchestra League, now the League of American Orchestras, and he became a mentor of mine. And uh, he really was was quite an influence um, at the beginning of my my career. And um, you know, it was just for me an opportunity for those sort of talents and interests to come together. Uh, and, and make a difference uh, in the way that I could through through music. Absolutely. So when this opportunity came up uh, on here on Cape Cod, uh, what made you say, I think I might try to go for that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Go, well, for one thing is, you know, I mean, Cape Cod is so beautiful. And I had spent time here uh, as a kid, and even I was mentioning in, in college, <laughs> I played at a place called the Golden Anchor in the West Dennis one summer. It was a summer gig, and so I had spent some some time here, and actually I've come here several times over the years as well uh, with my family. Um, so it's just such a naturally beautiful place. And there's a big ambition to build a new performing arts center. Mm. I know there have been other attempts at doing um, such a thing here on the Cape in times past, but it seems like the time is, is right. Um, I've been involved with the Kansas City Symphony uh, at the beginning stages of building what is now the Kaufman Center with the performing arts there, and I saw what a transformative thing that could be for that particular community, as well as, as, well as other communities that I've, I've seen. And so the notion of having a role uh, in, the, in the aspiration to build a performing arts center on the Cape is something I find really appealing and really exciting. Absolutely, and I know that uh, the former uh, CEO, Jerome Carter, was really, uh, really excited about that opportunity, so glad to see that you're going to be taking that torch. Uh, definitely a challenge here. Um, talk to me a little bit about that, that process in, in Kansas City. I mean, obviously, we're a little different geographically, a little different um, demographics and, and economy-wise, but right. in terms of, of, you know, going from, from the bottom up to making that performing arts center, you know, what were the challenges of that project? Yeah, usually, I mean, and there have been many such projects. Our most recent one that I'm familiar with is the Green Center uh, in Sonoma at Sonoma State University in Northern California, which was actually modeled after Ozawa Hall at, at Tamu, which is a wonderful sort of barn-like structure that opens up to the lawn and, wow. and the outdoors there. Uh, and so I think the key in every one of these circumstances is to build something which really is part of this particular or the community of which it is, it exists, uh, that exemplifies that community. It is really sort of a gathering place, a social place, an entertainment and cultural center uh, in that particular place, be it places like Aspen or La Jolla, California, or cities like Kansas City or Omaha or Columbus, Ohio, wherever it might, wherever it might be. Um, and you know, these are kind of a once in a multi-generational kind of things. And so, you know, it really is sort of a golden opportunity to do something that really can have a transformative effect or impact on the community over many generations. 
Absolutely, and when you think about, um, you know, ha we don't have a place like that right now at all. I mean, we have certainly venues. Uh, the Symphony plays at the Performing Arts Center at the Barnesville High School, which is, you know, it's, it's a nice venue, and, and so many people come to see the symphony. It's, it's right. very well attended, um, but thinking about kind of the cultural impacts that having a, a larger scale Performing Arts Center and, and possibly opening up to, to other acts uh, and looking at, you know, taking that year round. So, of course, the symphony's season is during our Cape Cod tourism off-season. Right, that's right. I mean, it really is sort of a, it really is a center for the arts um, for seasons. Absolutely. Um, and certainly the symphony will be a major part of that, but not the only. Um, I mean, we do nine concerts and nine programs now. There's room for growth, but still, there are 52 weeks in the year. And also, there are many different kinds of music, uh, which I think will be a natural fit, not just music, but, you know, certainly music. Um, that'd be such a wonderful fit for a place like like this. Absolutely. It takes a period of time and it's not inexpensive. Um, and so oftentimes it takes significant fundraising. Uh, usually there's a key donor or a small group of donors that step up uh, and really have an ambition and a vision um, to create such a thing not only for themselves and this generation but for generations to come. And education, um, you know, uh, needs to be a critical part of the, of the facility. And I am the president and CEO not over the Cape Symphony but Cape Symphony and Conservatory. So we have a wonderful community school for the arts uh, led by Stephanie Weaver that tr provides tremendous value to the community. Um, and we don't know whether, because it's a very sort of embryonic state, mm. whether the conservatory physically will be part of the facility, but certainly in terms of the spirit and the programs and otherwise, it'll be a critical part in the area of education. Absolutely. Of what um, happens. Indeed, and of course, I recall the, the merger of the symphony and the conservatory, I think, five or six years ago that that occurred. Right. Um, and I, as a, as a student, um, a high school student, I sang in the a cappella choir that the, the conservatory had. We performed a few times with the symphony, but that was, you know, of course, before, uh, before the, the merger happened. But it just seemed like a, such a natural fit. And for you, was that something that you found uh, attractive about this position, that not only were you, you know, are you the head of the symphony, but there's this educational arm as well? For sure, I mentioned at the beginning that I was involved in a startup at the Juilliard School. And that startup, I, what happened was I left the Kansas City Symphony and developed a technology product, um, kind of like audio guides are for museums, but for the performing arts, a kind of a visual enhancement to the oral experience. Uh, and I worked in the Silicon Valley, and that, and that led up to this partnership and ultimately a company uh, with the Juilliard School, which was all about educational products, uh, from young kids, kind of baby Einstein kind of product, um, to adults, which was my concert companion, sort of real-time listening notes. Um, so I've been deeply indebted um, and really invested. In fact, it was the very reason that I, that I had the career, I have had the career that I have, is through a sort of window of opportunity that, in my case, percussion, percussion provided to me um, that I think what I would not have had otherwise. So education is something which has been a critical part of my own sort of biography, mm. uh, and it's something I feel deeply um, passionate and I know the symphony's artistic director and conductor, Jung Ho Pak, of course, uh, is also uh, has, a, has a passion for education. What has it been like for you to work uh, with Jung Ho? He has so much energy and has brought so much enthusiasm to the leadership of, of the symphony. Uh, it's a marriage of sorts. In fact, we just had lunch uh, today, and I've just enjoyed him so much. He's such a visionary. Uh, his, his interests are so eclectic. Um, he's such a consummate artist um, and, and very unique in, in, in in ways that are, uh, I have not experienced in other conductors, I've worked with many over the years. He really brings incredible talent and a sort of portfolio of talents uh, and interest and skills to the job. So, you know, we, we work, you know, these kinds of relationships, both he as artistic director and conductor and me as president and CEO work hand in hand, kind of two sides of the same coin um, in reporting and working with the board of trustees and with the musicians and the community and the staff. So. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to working with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a natural fit. I think we're very much of like mind, and we're going to have some fun going forward. Indeed, and, and you, I think, already are, are having some fun thinking about the season that is underway. Um, the holiday concert, of course, uh, and the New Year's Day concert, which uh, I missed. I wanted to attend that. It was amazing. What what I was the most struck by not only was was the um, the, the Broadway, uh, the singer, but the woman who played a theremin. Oh yeah, the theremin. I mean, now, how uh, weird, I mean, that's just, you don't, you you don't hear about that. You play the instrument through sound waves. You actually don't touch anything but the air. You know, it's kind of amazing when you control it. It's just incredible. Uh, and it's such a unique instrument. I think it was the one that was used on the Beach Boys, Good Vibrations. Yeah. That sort of weird, sort of eerie, kind of haunting kind of, 
you know, horror movie kind of sound. Right, right. So talk to me a little bit. Was that something, was that Jung Ho's idea? Was that your idea? Was that something that kind of came up as, as a collaboration? I'd love to take full credit for it, but that was all planned well. <laughs> Before you came. Of, of my coming. And I'm sure, you know, Jung Ho is so creative programmatically. And uh, I think part of what's really unique about the Cape Symphony uh, is its extraordinary programs. And really, they are, they are experiences with a capital E, and not necessarily the conventional experience you get in place and, and go to a place like, you know, the Boston Symphony, as wonderful as it is. Uh, the programs uh, that Jung Ho has put together um, really, I think, have, have the Cape Cod, his stamp on in a way that I think is really, really different. Can we dig deeper into that experience with the capital E? I mean, is the, for, for someone who may not uh, be a regular attender of the symphony or, or who hasn't gone at all, um, I think that you might think you go in, you sit down, you listen to music. Um, but it's much more than that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it is. I, you know, the music itself can be so powerful. Uh, be it Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is our final concert this year, um, or the upcoming uh, program, um, Silk Road and Beyond, which has more sort of eclectic uh, kind of program, this, that, and, and some other things which are just very um, uh, engaging. Um, so, but at the end of the day, no matter what it is, be it familiar or unfamiliar, like going to a terrific restaurant, you, you may have the opportunity to enjoy something that you're familiar with in a new kind of way, or something you haven't enjoyed before that you find to be just really gratifying. So at the end of the day, the experience with a capital E is what you get while you're there. Does it resonate with you um, in, in a way that you leave? I mean, a famous conductor that I knew used to say, you know, you knew it was a great concert when, 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 when the molecules in your body, you could feel them actually move, you know, um, that, sort of, that sort of thing. And so you can't explain it, you can't measure it, you just sort of feel it. Yeah. It connects soulfully with who you are. And if you have that kind of experience, then it's successful. Absolutely. Well, I always think about music, especially attending live music, it's a transfer of energy. And it's the energy yeah. that's on the stage, it's coming into the, the audience, and the audience creates their own energy. And when it is in that moment, it's very powerful, and, and you can absolutely, it's, it's palpable. It's, it's almost tangible at that point. Exactly. And uh, for the concerts I've experienced since, uh, since I've been here, they've all been that way. And the, ex and the audience has been so responsive. Uh, and and, and the, the feedback I've gotten, it's just on the street talking to people and otherwise, uh, has been really great. So I think there's something very, frankly, in a way that I had no idea. Having grown up in Rhode, grown up in Rhode Island, going to school in Boston, been around the country, I really sort of, in a very sort of uninformed way, thought the Cape Symphony, I kind of heard of it. You know, when it's kind of a community orchestra. Right. You know, and uh, of course it turns out to be much more than that. A Surprise. fully professional orchestra of gifted musicians uh, in a way that's really very unique. Wonderful. So let's talk a little bit about the season. You mentioned the Silk Road concert that's coming up. Tell me a little bit about uh, this. I would assume some Asian-inspired themes uh, in the Silk Road concert. That's right. So, you know, the Silk Road is a road that went, you know, in the old days to China from, from Europe. And, of course, Yo-Yo Ma has, has um, uh, over the years, been producing his Silk Road, his Silk Road project. Um, and so it really is a combination of music from the old world up in Europe, with Mozart and Tchaikovsky on the program, uh, as well as, um, you know, pieces of an Asian influence. There's a piece by Toro Takamitsu, who's a uh, Japanese composer. Um, I think it's a Korean uh, drumming piece on the program. So it's very, very eclectic uh, in a way that really does pull it together in a way that really is an experience. Wonderful. And then uh, what, what, are, what else can we expect? Uh, how many more concerts are left uh, in the season? So we have, so there are five of the Masterpiece series. Uh, the, there are um, three concerts left. There's this one, a Mozart concert in Beethoven's Ninth. Uh, we have five Pops programs, of which two remain. There's a country program coming up uh, in February. Uh, and then we've got another program after that. And then we're getting ready to announce next season uh, as well. Because we also had our New Year's Day concert, as you mentioned, which is just extraordinary. We had a holiday, six holiday shows, wow. which were virtually sold out, which were incredible. So there really is a range of something for, for everybody. Uh, but give it a shot. Even if you think, well, wait a minute, I don't know that. You know, maybe, you know, this sort of thing's not my cup of tea. Maybe it is. Give it a shot. I think you'll be maybe uh, um, surprisingly um, rewarded and, and uh, pleased. Sure. So you said you're working on next season. Uh, obviously, probably can't make any announcements right. yet. Uh, but are you looking at any major changes or kind of following along the same uh, the same programmatic scheme that's been going yeah, on for not, several I years? I mean, you know, one of the things I'm looking at is you always do come in new situation. Is you know, sort of learning the, the the landscape and looking at the history, trying to understand over time, and then looking for opportunities going forward. So, and you know, we unlike some of the places I've been have not been, you know, had any any real financial challenges. 
when you're in a place that has had financial challenges, then sometimes you need to move things and change them more quickly. That's not the case here. So I think we'll take a very measured approach looking at the future, trying to understand and identify where there are opportunities to build upon the great success that we've had. Absolutely. Are there any any uh, short-term and long-term goals that you have uh, now that you've kind of gotten your feet wet, you're getting acclimated uh, to the area, to the symphony, to, to uh, Jung Ho and, and the way that, that he works? Uh, in terms of looking at goals, what would you like to see? Where would you like to see the symphony go? Well, in a way, it was a bit surprising to me just because of an uninformed assumption that we really don't have much of a footprint in the summertime, you know, when obviously there's a great groundswell of people coming mm. to the Cape. Um, some of that may have to do with facility as, as grateful as we are for the chance to perform at the high school, to perform at the Arts Center. You know, there are limitations there. Um, and so I think one of the, the notions with the new Performing Arts Center is you can have kind of events there. You can serve alcohol. You can have social events and things like that um, that we're not able to do now and maybe um, have the opportunity to do some things during the summer, be it a festival or something like that, um, that are not so easily done right right now. So I think that's one of the areas looking forward to me that may make some sense to mm. explore. Maybe we can get a bit of a head start before the building uh, would open. I mean, best case scenario, when you build a center like this and you fundraise and you get the architecture designs done, you figure out the acoustics and all that, it'll still take several years. Yes. And so this will be a transitional path from where we are towards that over a period of time. So where are we in terms of, of that that Performing Arts Center project? I mean, obviously, it's still in the discussion stage. Are there fundraising Well, there was an initial goals? feasibility, kind of the deeds assessment that was mm. done a couple of years ago, which came out very positive. And so now where we are is there's a separate board. Uh, the name is Oceanside Performing Arts Center. Um, and uh, Maggie, again, Skybert is the head of that uh, board, and she's wonderful. Um, so at a very early stage of looking at location, we hope to be able to announce a location, hopefully in the relatively near, near future. You know, it takes some significant gifts at the beginning, some, some, some seed money to sort of propel the, this forward. So that's a, a critical thing on the short-term short, short -term agenda. Uh, and then you identify, you know, the architect, the acoustician, what it's going to look like, how big it's going to be, who's it going to serve, and, and all those things. So all those things are in process at the moment. Indeed. And in, in, in thinking about the, the symphony's audience, I mean, obviously there is a dedicated group uh, that do go to the symphony. As you said, your holiday concerts were nearly sold out. Uh, again, any time I've attended the, the New York concert been. was sold out. Most of the concerts are very high percentage capacity, so Absolutely. we do very well. I indeed. Is there any thought of, of you know, working to connect with, with people who might not typically go to the, to the symphony, maybe the, the young professional right. crowd? And I know that obviously there's so much work done in the schools and the high schools and the elementary schools to get the kids really interested in it. That's Right, yeah, and we do educational concerts, many of them which are sort of under the radar, young people's concerts and things like, things like that. Uh, so that, in particularly in combination with the conservatory, we do have a very deep educational footprint in a sort of multiplicity of, of ways. But that said, you know, we've got to look forward. Um, and uh, as many orchestras are, in creating programs that appeal to different audiences. Mm. And there are ways to do that. Some do rush hour concerts, which are short one hour concerts, or even, even in some cases, shorter concerts than that. Um, some of them, the concerts are built on social events. Um, and so there, there are different things we can do, but I think targeting young professionals uh, and baby boomers and retiring baby boomers that are coming to the Cape, uh, programs for those that are less familiar with classical music, that like something a little more adventuresome, programs that are those that are more traditional, like something a little bit more um, familiar. You know, I think the notion is to create different things for different people going forward uh, so that we can have a, a, even a wider appeal than we do right now. Wonderful. Uh, well, and just uh, wanted to talk a little personally, of course, I hear you are on Cape Cod. You're coming again. You've lived in, in multiple places uh, across the country. Um, how are you enjoying uh, our, our little elbow of sand here in Massachusetts? <laughs> well, you know, being a, new, a native New Englander, it, you know, I'm, I really feel like I'm, I'm home. My wife and I are married on Block Island. It's kind of a bit of a Block island -y feel, you know. You have a little bit, yeah. Island, but it has an island kind of feel in a very sort of wonderful way. My wife is an abstract expressionist. She's a very talented artist. Her name is Melissa, and she paints the music. She has a show called Inspired by Music. She has synesthesia, which means she sees, you know, um, uh, music as color. Wow. And so she's got this very successful show. She's been very successful in her own right. There's a gallery that, you know, that represents her in Columbus, Ohio. So her being here on the Cape, having her own studio, the chance to be part of the art community here on the Cape, and hopefully find, you know, a gallery or, or so that will represent her. And, and a place for her to paint is going to be an important part of what we do. So I think for both of us, um, uh, we're 
we're very much looking forward to the experience and, and getting settled here. We bought a converted barn. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Brewster, that has a studio, a wonderful studio. So we're just sort of beginning to sort of get unpacked and make ourselves at home. Right. Well, I'm sure that, that uh, you will learn, as, as if you haven't already, that the Cape is a great place for creative people, and there's an abundance of, of good creative energy that floats around in here. So we hope sure. that, uh, that you will hope that you'll stick around. Roland, thank you so much uh, for joining me here on Inside Cape Cod. Well, great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Roland Vallier, of course, is the new uh, president and CEO of the Cape Symphony and Conservatory for Inside Cape Cod. I'm Sarah Colvin.